Welcome, I'm Huey Poplock, and I'm going to be talking about Microsoft Edge. Edge replaced Edge. That's right, Microsoft updated their Edge browser software with a new version based on the Chromium or Chrome browser, as opposed to their independently run Edge uh, browser before that. So this is what the new logo looks like. So Mary Jo Foley, uh, a podcaster uh, who talks about Microsoft on a weekly basis. I listen to her podcast along with uh, Paul Therott. And she coined the term Credge, and it's become a popular unofficial code name for the Chromium-based Edge, the new browser from Microsoft, even though Microsoft doesn't like the name Credge. And what that means, it is the Chromium version of Edge. Uh, the latest version, which just came out on May 21st, is version 83.0.478.37, but it's version 83 is the latest version. And there's been some few, there's been a few updates, and just Edge itself you may not be familiar with, and there's some things that I want to talk about with Edge. Microsoft Edge updates will now roll out gradually. Edge is being separated from the Microsoft Windows updates, and it will have its own updates. So going forward, updates for Edge will be rolled out to users over a period of a few days instead of all at once. And this protects the users from accidental buggy updates. There are several improvements to the Microsoft Defender smart screen service, such as improved protection and, and so on and so on and so on. What, it both, what all that gobbledygook means is there's better security in, in the latest version of Edge. Users can now exempt certain cookies from automatically clearing when the browser closes. Most of you don't get into uh, what cookies you're going to allow and not allow and delete and so on. But the fact is that there's better control of cookies in this latest version of Edge if you want to be involved in that. Also, there's something called collections. When I was using Edge to put this presentation together, this popped up and says, have you tried collections? Easily collect and organize and share content you'll find across the web. And I'm going to demonstrate that in the, de in the demo in just a bit. And so once I said yes, it said start a new collection. And I, once I did that, it started, it was very, very clear on how to do it. And this is the button we're going to have to look for when we do open up the uh, edge. So you can use drag and drop to add an item to a collection without opening the collection. Uh, during the drag and drop, you can also choose location in the collection list where you want to put the item. You can add multiple items to a collection instead of adding just one at a time. Uh, you can add multiple items. Uh, you can select items and then drag them to the collection. And you can select the items, right click, and then pick the collection where you want the items. I try to play with some of these, and I didn't get it to work. And I think it may be because it's the, 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 those advancements haven't been rolled out, but the collections feature is working in the version of Edge that I have that you probably will have as well if you do all of the updates. You can add the tabs in an Edge window to a new collection without adding them individually. When you see what tabs are, you'll, you'll get an idea a little bit about what all this means. So you can now easily add all open tabs to a collection of Microsoft Edge. The feature is available in the Dev and Canary. This was a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, that uh, these items came out. So right-clicking on a tab shows the option uh, to add uh, tabs to the new collection. And I did notice that I don't have that feature yet. So this is coming, but it's, and it, but it's coming soon. Uh, here's what it's going to look like. I couldn't do it, so I had to steal somebody else's uh, image. But it will look like this, where you can duplicate a tab, you can pin a tab, uh, you close it, but you can also reopen the tab. Uh, you can add all the tabs to favorites. You can add tabs to a new collection. And here's here it is a little bit uh, larger. 
not quite as clear, but certainly larger. The latest stable version of Microsoft Edge browser finally adds support for extension syncing, uh, meaning you won't have to manually reinstall extensions individually with each new device. Extension sync is now available. You can sync your extensions across all of your devices. Uh, I tried to play with this a little bit, and what I'm looking at is I think Microsoft Edge Sync enables the users to access their browsing data across their signed-in devices. The data supported by Sync includes favorites, passwords, addresses, and more. In other words, filling in forms and so on. Uh, settings. Users can turn Sync on or off for each of the data types listed above. But what I'm finding is the prerequisites that you have to have the Office 365 Enterprise 3 and above, not even Enterprise 1 or 2, you've got to have some of the advanced Enterprise. And Enterprise means the large corporation versions. So I don't think this, uh, I may be wrong, Mike, uh, Mike, uh, uh, Ron and I got pretty excited about the fact that, oh, we can now with Edge have all of the extensions go across from Chrome to Edge. That may be, that may be the case, but that's not what I'm reading. So we may be, I may be wrong in, uh, in, in our assumption, but, uh, and I hope I am because I, I hope it, uh, uh, it does work, but this may not be something that all of us can take advantage of. Uh, uh, the Immersive Reader had several impo uh, improvements, and I'm going to get into the uh, Immersive Reader in my demo because I love this feature about the Microsoft Edge, and I think you will as well. A there is added support for adverbs and, the part and parts of speech uh, experience that we have in Immersive Reader. While reading an article within Immersive Reader, uh, you can open the grammar tools, switch on adverbs within parts of speech to highlight all the adverbs, for instance. I'm going to demonstrate that in just a few minutes. Uh, I also added the ability so to select any content on a web page and open it in, immersive, in the Immersive Reader. Uh, this ability enables users to use the Immersive Reader and all the learning tools such as Line Focus, Read Aloud across all websites. We'll see that uh, also in my demo. Uh, Link Doctor provides host correction and a search query for users when they mistype a URL. And here's an example. If you misspell P-O-W-E-R-B-I-S and you add two Bs in there, uh, dot com, the Link Doctor will suggest the one with just the one B as a correction, but it'll also uh, give you a link to search for the, the one you typed in wrong, just in case you are looking for something different than what it ex expected. Version 81, which was two, two versions ago now, was April 13th. There, they skipped 82, uh, and Chrome did the same thing. There was no 82 version. They waited too long, but this came out in April, and Microsoft Edge uh, now identifies and removes duplicate favorites, uh, and you can merge folders with the same name. Uh, you can access the tool. You, uh, in order to do so, you click the star on the browser's toolbar and select Remove Duplicate Favorites. You can, uh, you can confirm the changes, and any updates to your favorites will be synced across the devices. Uh, if you have payment cards saved in your Microsoft account, you can use them in Microsoft Edge while filling out payment forms. The cards in your Microsoft account will sync across the desktop devices. And again, I'm not sure uh, if, you have, if, if you have to uh, uh, be a part of the enterprise or whether this will work on home computers as well. And the full details will be shared uh, with, with the website after two-factor authentication. They, and it needs your CVC code and your Microsoft identity. So for th further convenience, you can choose to securely save a copy of the card on your device during the authentication. Uh, there's also something called Line Focus. It's designed to, for users who like to focus on a limited part of the content. You'll see this when we do the immersive uh, reader and how you can change that, and, and also uh, some of the setups. I, I will show you how you can change what the line focus is. 
Uh, when a PDF document uh, documents are opened using Microsoft Edge, users are able to create highlights, change color, and delete highlights. This feature helps in referencing important parts of the document later and for calibration. So to, to start the immersive reader for a website, just press the F9 key, uh, or you can click it, uh, and I'll show you how you click it. And then to start reading aloud uh, with the keyboard shortcut, you can use Control Shift U, or you can click the button uh, that I'll show you, and you can start reading aloud. So let's go ahead and get on with our demo. We're ready for our demo. Let's take a look at Microsoft Edge, and you are. This is the Microsoft Edge. We're on the home page of the Microsoft Edge uh, browser. And what we're going to sh show you, or what I want to show you, is first of all, if you remember in the slide deck, I couldn't get the drop-down box to work properly, but I am right now. So you're seeing several tabs open, and I can take all of those tabs and make a new collection. Remember, we are talking about collections. When I click that, what it's going to do, it's going to go out and say, okay, these are all of the various tabs. And we're going to make a collection of all of those tabs, and we can call it whatever we want. We'll call it Test Collection, and just click outside of that box, and it, it, and it saved that. And there's six different pages now, so whenever we want to start these six pages, all we have to do is, is click the button up here that says Collections. When I do, I have right now two collections in my group. It, just to show you that, I have two collections. If I want to go to the Test Collection, I go there. All I have to do is to the right here with these three dots, I can send all of them to Excel. I can send them to Word. I can open all of them, and I can copy all of them. So if I click Open All, it will open all of the tabs, and you'll be ready to go with all of these tabs uh, ready to work with. So that's called a collection, and I really like this feature. So let's get started with what we can do, What the, the thing that I really like about the new Edge. So let's go to a web page, and when I'm on that web page, you'll notice right here the uh, print, uh, the immersive reader. And as if you remember in the slides, I said if you hit F9, it will start it, or you can click this button. Let's see what the immersive reader is. Well, here it is. What it does, it cleans up the entire page with just the information that you want. In fact, it cut out all of the pictures as well, but it really made it so it's a printable form. There's a lot of things you can do with this. So let's see what we can do. And if I move my mouse up to the top, I get a menu, and that menu can go away. But if I tell it to pin it, it won't go away. It'll just stay there. The read aloud I'm going to come back to, but let's take a look first at text preferences. With the text preferences, we can change the size of the text in this immersive reader page. If I want to make them smaller, if I want to make them even larger, look at how big it can make it. But we'll keep it back here to about where it was when we started. Now on the text spacing, you can turn that on or off. If we turn it on, it makes it each word separate and makes it easier to read for some people. That might be an advantage. Now you can also change the theme of the page. Right now it's like a beige background with a black letter. I could go to a black with white letters. I could go to a green with black letters. There's even many more, including an O. Oh, everybody would want this, of course. Well, let's go back to the default again. And that's it for the text preferences. Now, reading preferences, I had mentioned earlier you could have a line focus. So what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at it. If you've got it on one line, it's going to show you the one line. So if we come down here to a paragraph, it's one line. Each time you move it, it's one line at a time. If you want three lines, you can have three lines for the focus, and the rest of it's kind of grayed out. Or you can have it five lines. So we can move it down here and have it as five lines. 
So let's go back to reading preferences, make it one line, and we're going to shut that off. So you don't even have to have it if you don't want. The other thing is the grammar tools. The grammar tools, you can divide the words into syllables, and each of the multiple syllable uh, uh, word will have a little dot between the sy syllables to show you how they are. The other thing you can do is, is highlight the various parts of speech. So if you want to see all of the adjectives, if you're using the same adjectives over and over again, they're green on here. The, they actually show up as green with the green word adjective above it. If you want to look at the ad, adverbs, if you have a tendency to use the same words over and over again, you can check your work and see it this way and see if what it is. If it's your work, if it's somebody else's, you can do it with that as well. So that's it for the grammar tools. The part that I really like is the reading aloud. So let's go back to the top and go to the reading aloud. While your Zoom invite failed. An interesting issue arose during a recent Zoom meeting. You can see, as soon as I hit that button, it starts reading the text. Now, what are some of the, let's make it less confusing and close this. What are some of the things you can do with the voice options? You can make it faster. Let's say you want to speed read and you want it to read to you very fast. We can make it all the way fast and let's listen to it then. Zoom meeting that I was hosting for a group and I was the presenter. I created the meeting and sent a copy of the invite to my content. You can uh, listen to a five-minute uh, uh, video or a five-minute page reading of it uh, in just a couple of minutes. So let's go back to normal. And then the other thing you can do is change the voice. Now, there are a lot of voices you can choose from, and you'll see several are in from foreign countries. It doesn't translate into the language. It only gives that person is going to speak in English with an accent from that country. So as you read each of them, but let's just uh, take a look at some of the other English ones. Let's listen to Zira and then continue. Contact in the group. He then sent out an email to the members. And one more quick uh, choice here. Let's listen to uh, Haley from Aust Australia. Whoops, and continue. Members. When we started the meeting, many of the regulars and those who indicated that they would be online were not. And I can stop it. We'll go back up and we'll pick David again. And uh, again, just a quick reminder. Not. One of the members made phone calls to those missing attendees and they indicated issues with signing in. So that's it for the voice options and the immersive and we can always just close the immersive by clicking the button it gets us back out and we're back at the web page that's uh, the the two features that I'm really impressed with with Microsoft Edge there are a lot more for you to take a look at go ahead and try Microsoft Edge you can add it to your uh, your desktop and you, whether you're using right now Chrome or you're using Firefox or any other of the browsers, you can add Edge, uh, which is probably there anyway. Make sure you have the updated version, and the latest version, and try it. It's worth trying. Okay, thanks for joining us.